Hey there, this is Carol Matz, and this is the teaching tips video for one of my studio packs, and that's the Classics Pack 1 for the elementary levels. Now, the video and the other materials in this PDF are studio licensed, and that means that you are allowed to share them with any of your own piano students in any way you like. Whatever works best for you, whatever is convenient is fine with me. Now in the video, I'm going to referring, be referring to both the score itself as well as the student exploration pages. And those you'll find in the PDF located right before each piece. And you might want to have those materials in front of you while we're um, going through the pieces. Now before we get going, just a quick reminder to download all of the MP3 backing tracks and teacher duet recordings and those can be found on page six of the PDF. You just click and the MP3s will download. Also, I think you're really gonna love uh, the student multimedia resources. This is video, sound files, images, maps, all kinds of things that relate to the piece that the student is learning, or maybe a little bit of music history, information about the composers, where they're from, and so forth. And I want you to know I assembled all of these resources in one place, right here in these PDF pages. And that's gonna make it easy for students to have a completely immersive, fun and interactive experience while they're learning their new piece. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna cover one piece at a time. And if you wanna skip directly to any particular piece, simply go back to the page of the PDF that you were on and click on the timestamp for that piece. For example, it might say four minutes and 17 seconds. You just click right on that and you will be sent directly to that portion of the video. Okay, now the first piece is Beethoven's famous Ode to Joy. That's from his Ninth Symphony, of course. And what I really love about this piece, uh, teaching to young students is, besides exposing them to great music, is that it's a fantastic way to review steps, skips, and in particular, repeated notes. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of the student exploration activities. This is the discover part. Which hand plays the first line of music? Write L or R for left or right. So the student's gonna identify uh, which hand is playing each line of music and it's in a very uh, obvious C major five finger uh, pattern and that'll be an el uh, early elementary level. So after that number two on the discover says below is the first line of Ode to Joy. Continue underlining all of the repeated notes. So you can see that I started doing that with the E and the E and then this moves over to the G, now notice that the G in the first measure goes and across the bar line to repeat again. So it's really important the students pick up those repeated notes across the bar line. So the student will continue to underline all of the repeats. Then the next section is a listening activity that involves the teacher and the student together. Listen as your teacher plays the above measures. Does this music sound happy or sad? So you'll play. And I even recommend maybe throwing in uh, some cadence chords to kind of further illustrate. Or something like that to really have them feel uh, that major sound. Now we're not necessarily going to use the terms major and minor. This is really to have them uh, listen and feel and, and listen actively. Then the next one says listen as your teacher plays again. Does the music sound happy or sad this time? And then it says teacher play all E's as E flats. So obviously that's going to take the piece and turn it into minor. So I'm going to play it for the student with minor and cadence chords like a C minor to a G7, so. Now, sometimes students can go, oh yeah, that's sad. But then if you play another one, they'll go, oh, that's sad. Oh no, wait, I'm not sure. The most important thing is to constantly contrast the happy and the sad 
uh, you know, the major and minor sounds back to back for the student. So listen closely to hear the difference as the teacher switches between the major and minor with happy and sad verbal cues. So this could just be as simply as simple as you going, is this happy? Oh, is this happy? So they start hearing the minor. And then Beethoven gets really mad. So you want to kind of go back and forth between the two to really contrast that sound so the student can internalize that sense of major and minor. And then finally, uh, on the little arrow, it says, what is an ode? So that's a poem or music that is in honor of something. And what is joy? You know, let's ask six-year-olds, what is joy? Ice cream. <laughs> that's mine. Uh, how would you describe a day filled with joy? We're asking the students. And apparently mine starts with a pint of Ben and Jerry's. Okay. Uh, bonus activity after the students learn Ode to Joy. This is really great. If you wrote your own Ode to Joy, a piece of music in honor of joy, what would it sound like? Let's find out. So the student will choose notes from the C major five finger pattern, C, D, E, F, G, and then write the letter names of each note that they choose. Now this is, uh, the next sentence here says, teacher, you may help the student choose notes and or write the note names for the student. That goes for the whole pack. For all of the elementary levels, you want to assist the student in all of these creative activities, whether it's helping them choose the notes, whether it's physically writing it in for them, whatever you deem necessary for that student, depending on their level their age and their ability to um, coordinate all of that. So you can just prompt them and write in for them whatever is best for that individual student. And then the student writes their name below and they play their new piece. Now the next piece is Swan Lake from the ballet by Peter Tchaikovsky. And this is a beautiful theme in minor, and it's really going to focus the student on making sure they're connecting their notes, that they're playing smoothly. So the theme is... And now you can see that I've outlined the area we want the student to focus playing smoothly and then you can see that we've outlined those left hand skips. Now to go over these essentials in the student exploration page the first part is a warm-up and this is going to have those areas highlighted for the student to work on and you can see uh, number one is what we just played from the second and third measures and then the left hand skips are from measures five through seven of the piece. So the student is gonna focus on playing that smoothly and making sure they're clearly getting their, their skips, their thirds. And the next exercise, listen as your teacher plays part of Swan Lake, does this music sound happy or sad? Now, if you've already listened to the video portion for Ode to Joy, this is very similar in that you're going to play for the student and you don't have to focus on the words major or minor, but even at this level for early elementary, happy or sad is fine. And the student, um, you'll play for the student measures one through five and then have them see if they feel that that's happy or sad. Then listen as your teacher plays again. Does the music sound happy or sad this time? And the teacher will play the same music, but with all the C's as C sharps. So instead of it being a, ma a minor, we're going to play it as a major, something like. There's your major. Okay, it doesn't sound like Swan Lake. So the most important thing is to you try to put like a chord behind it so that they can. There's your A minor. So they can kind of hear that very clear. And then I'm playing an A major triad in my left hand. And then switch. And 
that's how you're going to get the student to contrast playing back and forth until they really have that register, the happy versus sad sound. So they'll be listening very closely, active listening. Okay, now the next piece is the really fun Can Can by Jacques Offenbach. I think I'm saying that right. Um, actually, this little painting is by uh, Toulouse-Lautrec of the women in Moulin Rouge doing the Can Can. And you can see in this piece that there are a couple, what I like to call challenge spots. And I've uh, put a box around the first one, which is where the left hand goes over the right hand. It's a crossover and then comes back. And then the other challenge spot is articulating the two note slurs with staccatos. Okay, so I like to um, have the student find their own challenge spots. So they can play and they can like search for their challenge spots. That's kind of what I call it. And that makes them not feel intimidated by that spot. It's like, ooh, I found it. Now I'm gonna work on that one little isolated area. So to help um, work through these challenge spots, take a look at the student exploration page for Can Can. Now the warm up is gonna address that first challenge spot, that left hand crossover. So play the measure below three times. Your left hand crosses over your right hand and moves back before repeating. So the student, it's much slower, crossing over, and they'll continue until they are comfortable with that left hand index finger crossing over finger two. And then, next to the little jump rope, play the measure below, the measures below three times and notice the slurs and staccatos. So we have it in the right hand and then the left hand. That's to get that two note slur with staccato articulation. So articulation is very important in this piece. The contrasts between the legato and the staccato. Now in the discover section of this piece, we ask the student to circle all the dynamics. And then starting at measure one, we're gonna have the student trace <clears throat> through the music using their finger to show the path that they would follow while they're playing the piece. This is something in the elementary, early elementary level um, where they'll be, uh, this might be a little bit of a new concept. So we have the reminder about first and second endings. They go through the first time. Once they hit those double dots, they repeat. And then you can see this dashed line. I've tried to show that you're skipping over the, the second time through, you're skipping over to that second ending. So this is a really nice visual and having the student actually move their finger, jumps back to here, goes to here. That is a very great tool for you to use to make sure the student's really understanding how the endings work. And then finally, this is really fun. Compose a piece based on musical ideas from Can Can. So we're gonna give the students a cued composition. Cued meaning that there are little hints for them along the way to help steer them in a direction that's gonna make the, sound, uh, the piece sound cohesive. So they're gonna choose their notes, F, G, A, B flat. You can see that's an F major chord. I mean, F major scale divided between the hands. Students will start on the F and then they write in the little notes, one, two, three, four. They've got the four quarter notes, which they choose. They write them on the staff there. Of course, again, you can help students write or choose notes, anything that's required. And then it switches to right hand. The student chooses more notes. You can see that it goes through uh, to the first ending where I have them land on a dominant, the C, if we're in the key of F, and then it repeats and then it goes through a second ending. So this is not only to reinforce uh, you know, the, the notes that are from the piece, but it also is really good to reinforce how first and second endings work. Okay now, Jesu Joy of Man's Desiring by my guy, maybe your guy too, Johann Sebastian Bach. Um, ever since I was a kid, I've been a nut for Bach's music. And I remember I was a, I was a Guild student 
And I was in my teacher's little waiting area before my lesson, and she had like a brochure of all the different awards that she could get uh, for her students. And for some reason, I just became obsessed with getting a little Bach plaque, the early Bach award. I'd never had like a trophy or plaque or anything to that point. I was 10 years old, and I was like, I want that plaque. And in fact, <laughs> hang on, <laughs> it is in my office with me here. <laughs> Not that I'm showing off, it's just that this was my motivation. This was 1975, please don't do the math. And um, that's really what got me going with really enjoying Bach, Bach's music. And later I got very into, I played the violin and, and got into the Brandenburg concertos and the violin concerti and things like this. So hopefully this is a little bit of an entree into enjoying Bach's music for your students. So. Uh, we have a real big emphasis on playing legato with this piece, so, I'm sorry. I've always thought that was really interesting that if you ask a student where the phrases begin and end, they can't find one in this piece. I can't find one in this piece, and that's what I always thought was so interesting. The melody, does it doesn't have like that... It has commas but no periods. It doesn't breathe. It doesn't have that I'm done with the sentence and moving on to the next phrase. It's just one long phrase. Da 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 does it stop? It doesn't stop. It keeps going on and on and on. Okay, so it's like there's no play. So what I like to do sometimes is play that for the student so that they can see what this long legato phrase is all about. So we're gonna look at the warm-up page, uh, the warm-up exercises from the student exploration page. Play three times, focus on playing smoothly. Now this takes a challenge spot in the piece where the student's left hand is gonna shift down. So we're gonna to wanna to isolate that and review. So, so the second finger moves down to that G. So this is going to address that little spot. And then the second warm-up, Play three times, focus on playing smoothly. This is B, D, G, ending on that sixth. That's from the end of the piece. And next, we're gonna have the student get really into the nitty gritty of the piece to discover different things about it. So at measure one, we'll have them circle the rest on beat one. Then they're gonna write in the counts for the measure, one, two, three, because they rest on that beat one downbeat. Then at measure 11, what broken chord does the left hand play? The left hand outlines a D major triad you might have seen on the previous slide. And then play the music below. This is from the last four measures of the piece. All the notes are from the G major chord, G, B, D, but in a different order, B, D, G, and we're showing the students, of course, this is a G major chord in first inversion. It's not necessary that you have to get into that, depending on the student's age and whatever. I mean, this is a late elementary piece. If you want to start showing inversions, this is a very easy way to go about doing so. So you can see the bracket. It shows that G major first inversion chord. And then finally, there's a little listening question. Listen as your teacher plays the piece. And what title would be better to describe the music? Smooth flowing river or exploding fireworks? So the student will obviously, hopefully choose smooth flowing river to emphasize that legato. Okay, now this next piece, look at that handsome face of Robert Schumann. Uh, this is Wild Horseman, such a fun piece. And you can see here the score, lots of staccatos. And also it's really a good piece to show students uh, how they can go through the format of the piece. So you can see, for example, and we'll have uh, the student exploration page go through this, that it starts on a pickup on beat three. And then you can see it goes through to the fine where we have a partial measure that is split onto the next line. That is something students are going to start seeing when they're playing piano literature. And it's very easy to show it if it's illustrated and numbered. So you can see I have beat uh, where it says fine, 
one, two, and then beat threes on the next line. And the same thing with the DC Alfine in the second ending. One, two, and then they DC and the beat three is at measure one again. So this is a great piece for the student, again, to go through and trace their finger through and show you where they jump from. For example, they start at the beginning, they go through the fine, measure 16, they go measure 17 through the first ending, back to the double dots at 17, jump to the second ending, and then they DC Alfine. So while that might seem overwhelming, it's broken down very carefully in this Discover activity. So we're gonna have the student look at the second page of music at the end of the first line. And even though, this is how we explain it, even though the time signature is three, four, there are only two beats in this measure. See the purple numbers for the counts, which we just looked at. Beat three has moved over to the next line in its own mini measure. I always like to call them mini measures and then I get a couple of mini me's doing that. Mini measures, okay? They clap the rhythm of measures 14 through 17 while counting aloud. So they really are internalizing how that works. Then starting at measure one, use your finger to trace through the music to show the path you would follow while playing the piece. And then you can see we've got a little reminder for students about DC Alfine. When you see DC Alfine, go back to the beginning and play until you see the word fine. I always like to say it's similar to finish. They have the first few letters there to remind them. And now we've got warm ups. You can see this works on the phrasing that two note slur with staccato. So student repeats then they're gonna move everything up a step and do it up the keyboard they can keep moving as like as long as they'd like to do that the idea is to have them feel the weight of the, the of the um, non staccato note weight and then the lift the short Okay, so that will help them do the right hand moving up. And then we've got a parallel exercise for the left hand where they'll start on the G. And they will also move up one step each time. Again, long, short. So that's a good warm up for students. And then finally, this is super fun. This is a create exercise. Compose a piece based on musical ideas from Wild Horseman. So they're gonna choose notes from the notes shown here. It's just C, D, E, F, G. And they will use the small notes to show the rhythm that they should write in. Now I have a few prompts throughout the piece. Again, I do that in order to have um, the music be very cohesive when the student won't just write random notes. So kind of get them back on track occasionally just to make sure they have a very cohesive composition. So at the beginning, you can see measure one is given. So it's measure two, copy measure one, and then measures three and four, the students will put in uh, three quarter notes, staccato, any notes of their choice. So maybe they're gonna do like this. This is starting at measure one. Then they copy measure one. Then they choose notes. Maybe that. Then they move on. Then they copy measure five. Then they choose three more notes. Anything they want. So you can see it's So like little prompts to really get the student to start uh, feeling comfortable with composition and drawing their notes. And then finally, of course, they get to play their piece and give it a title.